vectors in the plane, we shift our attention now uh, primarily to vectors, and we'll spend the rest of uh, this course and the remaining, uh, really, um, uh, part of uh, Calculus 3, all of Calculus 3, focusing on vectors and what we call vector analysis. Here we introduce uh, vectors in a very simple way. Uh, maybe you have seen uh, this before. Um, if so, this would be a review. Uh, we talk about the component form of a vector. What is a vector? A vector is, um, is a quantity that has two things. Uh, it has to have magnitude, that is length, and then secondly, it has to have direction. Uh, so where you're going, that direction is based on where you're coming from and then also where you're going. Um, that direction can be given in terms of an angle or it can be given in terms of uh, the components representing the X, Y, and Z axis in terms of I, J, and K where they denote just the, uh, the pole position of where the vector is located or the line segment. So we begin by the just a simple definition of a component form of a vector. If V is a vector in the plane whose initial point is the origin, whose terminal point is V sub 1, V sub 2, then the component form of V is given as here V equal to uh, V sub 1, V sub 2. That's the notation that the author gives. I, I do not prefer it. That is the notation of the vector because uh, later on in mathematics, we introduce the idea of an inner product, and we say the inner product of two vectors, uh, v1 and v2, or v and u, is given by this form. So I, I do not prefer that notation for the vector. This notation, uh, normally in higher forms of mathematics, is given as the inner product. Uh, simple case where uh, n equal to 2 or 3, you just call that the normal dot product. So this here is not the dot product or the inner product. This is said to represent the vector. Um, and so I will use parentheses typically representing the vector, uh, not to downplay the vector to a point, um, but uh, I do not use that. Another form that we can use is to say that this is v sub 1 i plus v sub 2j, where, where here i is equal to 1 comma 0, and j is equal to 0 comma 1. So the i represents for us uh, a unit vector for the uh, position on the x-axis, and j represents the unit or the length of one um, vector on the uh, y-axis. We say that v sub 1 and v sub 2 are the components of uh, v. The standard zero vector depends on whatever dimension we're in. Here we're in the second dimension. The, this is the second Euclidean space, or R2, uh, that denotes uh, uh, length and width. R3, we talk about length, width, and height. So from the origin, the terminal position v1, v2, we have the standard position there for the vector. Just a few things that I thought uh, are important um, in terms of discussing vectors. If you have two uh, points, P and Q, then we can look at the line segment, uh, PQ, which is a vector. And it is always denoted as where you're going minus where you're coming from. So this would be Q sub 1 minus P sub 1 comma Q sub 2 minus P sub 2 to represent here this uh, component form of the vector uh, V. You can introduce here the distance formula to talk about the distance or the norm or the magnitude of V and it is the straightforward distance formula. Uh, so it becomes the square root of the first component squared plus the second component squared. We say that a vector v um, is called, uh, or the, the length of v, the magnitude of v is called its norm. So 
to talk about the norm of a vector, we're just talking about the magnitude going back to this formula here for the standard inner product space. Uh, norms and um, inner products uh, can change um, um, based on uh, uh, the space that we're in. But here we talk about the Euclidean space, and so we have the standard inner product or the standard dot product and then the standard norm uh, given by, by this formula here. Uh, vector operations, obviously, um, if, um, if the vector is a zero vector, then its norm is zero. You can normalize a vector, that is, you can make it have uh, length one by taking the, a vector and dividing it by its norm. So if the norm of V is equal to one, then V is said to be a unit vector. Just some basic properties uh, here and operations of vectors. First, we talk about uh, vector sum. You can add two vectors. You add the corresponding components. You can multiply a scalar times a vector, so it becomes a scalar times each component. The negative of a vector is no more than the opposite translation of the components. You can add a vector to uh, the negative of another vector. We call that the difference. And so here you're adding u to the opposite of v. And then the very classical problems of vector um, analysis. Um, in linear algebra, we, we prove that certain uh, spaces or said to be a vector space based on these eight um, axioms or properties. Uh, we, we have 10. Uh, there's one that proceeds uh, 1 through um, 4, and then there's another one that proceeds 5 through 8. The one that proceeds 1 through 4 is said to be closure with respect to vector addition. These four pertain to vector addition. And then the last four pertain to scalar multiplication. There's a scalar always times a vector. And we say that these four must be closed with respect to scalar multiplication. So we have 10, and all 10 uh, would uh, define for us a space. And so there are definitions for, in mathematics, for a space, for a field, for a group. And, and so those, those terms mean something in topology and um, abstract algebra. But for now, uh, the standard properties are important for you to know. And you've seen them all your life in terms of commutativity with respect to addition, but this is with respect to vector addition. The associative property with respect to uh, vector addition, the additive identity uh, element, which is zero, that a vector added to zero does not harm the vector. The vector uh, maintains uh, all of its properties. Um, and then if if u, then there exists the negative of u. So u plus its negative gives, gives us the so-called additive uh, inverse. So uh, the gives us the additive identity. The additive inverse is the negative u with respect to u. So the additive uh, uh, property here, the additive identity, is the zero element. And then uh, 5 through 8, we talk about scalar multiplication. So this is the uh, here the property for association with respect to scalars. And then 6 and 7, we move to the distributive property. Here we distribute uh, scalars on a vector. And then we distribute uh, vectors onto one scalar. And then 8 is most profound, where multiplying 1 times a vector, the vector there also should maintain all of its properties. Uh, and then zero times a vector, uh, somehow that vector vanishes into the so-called kernel. The length of a scalar multiple, let V be a vector and let C be a scalar. Then if you have the norm of the scalar times the, the vector, you can pull out the scalar and but treat it uh, as the absolute value times the uh, times the norm of v. Here, uh, the unit vector in the direction of, of v, there's a section in calculus 3 where we talk about the directional derivative in the direction of a 
a vector u and, and we're going to use this uh, as the foundation here if v is a, a non-zero vector on the plane then the vector u which is v divided by its norm is said to be the, its unit vector so you can force the vector to have a norm length of one by dividing the vector by its uh, norm or divided by its magnitude here u is said to be the unit vector of v and this u is in the direction of v wherever v is going u points right to it i see you okay well and then lastly in this section we introduce uh, we talk more about it uh, later on in the upcoming sections but most classical uh, theorem the triangle inequality which simply says that um, if you have a triangle with three sides that any two sides um, here if you add up any two sides uh, those two sides uh, the sum of them are always greater than or equal to the sum of the third side uh, now it doesn't matter how you write it uh, you could say uh, the sum of, of u uh, plus u plus v is going to be obviously greater than uh, uh, v and we talk about the norm or the, the length size so this magnitude we're talking about the size of um, the size S-I-Z-E -E, of the sides S-I-D-E-S -E and so so in a nutshell the triangle inequality says something very obvious most profound and the proof is is very neat um, um, also uh, I, if we have time and space we can look at that um, we spend a lot of time in linear algebra uh, showing the proof uh, of such uh, but it simply says that given any triangle the sum of two sides of the triangle will always be greater than uh, the third side okay. let's look at some problems now so here find the component form of the vector v and then part b sketch the vector with its uh, initial point uh, at the origin so here find the component form so basically we're having to look for PQ so if, if this is P this is Q so the line segment PQ is equal to its terminal minus its initial so 5 minus 1 is 4 then comma 4 minus 2 is 2 and then part B sketch the vector with its initial point at the origin and uh, our young lady is here to pick up the trash of which I she won't come here because I have the door closed and if you just stay right there Sorry about that. I could have paused this, but I've been having some trouble when I pause it and I try to come back and it doesn't work. That's what happens when you get the free version of this software. But anyway, uh, let's sketch the, the graph. Sketch the graph of PQ. So we need four and two. One, two, three, four. It's a straight line, right? <laughs> I could have used that sophisticated graphing stuff up there, but it just takes too too much time. Find the vectors u and v whose initial and terminal points are given. So if we treat this as p, treat this as q. So here, the line segment pq. This is 5 minus 3, 2, and this is 6 minus 2, that's 4. Let's call this R, call this S. So the line segment RS is 3 minus 1 is 2, and then 8 minus 4 is 4. So here you, you find the vectors U and V whose terminal and 
initial and internal points are given. And we just did that, and then show that U and V are equivalent. Well, they are the same. So here, um, in exercise 11, the initial and terminal points are of a vector are given. First, sketch the, the given uh, directed line segment. Write the vector in component form. C, write the vector as a linear combination of the standard unit vectors I and J. Uh, I think we've noted I and J in, uh, in our previous slide. But I is 1, comma, 0, and J is 0, comma, 1. Now, this is for the, the second Euclidean space. Now, they change a little bit when you're in R3. So when we're in the, here, we call this the plane, right? And you hear the notation of R3 as just the space. So I and R3 is 1, 0, 0. J is 0, 1, 0. And then we have K because we have three elements there and space is 0, 0, 1. The unit vectors. So let's see if we can uh, answer the questions. So first, A, maybe I will get these, these lines here. I guess I better do some plotting. So eight comma three, eight comma three, say we're there, and then six comma negative one, about here, and the six negative one is the terminal, so that's where we're going. I should have gotten the one that has the arrow on the end of it. Let's see if I can write over that. Oh, beautiful. <laughs> Do a little labeling. So here this was eight comma three, and then this point here was six negative one. So then it says write the vector in the component form. That's part B. You gotta put it there. So the component form, we'll just call it PQ, is the terminal minus the initial components. This is six minus eight, negative two, negative one minus three, negative 4. Then part C, they want us to write this in the linear combination. So PQ is equal to negative 2i minus 4j. So you can write it as a component or a linear combination of i and j. And then part D, sketch uh, this point here with the initial point being the origin. So the point uh, negative 2 
negative 4. Let's see, we're somewhat right there. So we're going from the origin. That's all they want there. In exercise 2934, with well, this problem here, number 33, we're going to find the um, the magnitude. So the magnitude of the vector is the square root of here the components squared. So it's the square root of 36 plus 25. So here the, the magnitude is the square root of 61. Here find the unit vector in the direction of V and verify that it has uh, length 1. Interesting. So we first find the norm of V so this is the square root of 3 squared plus 12 squared. It's the square root of 9 plus 144. This is the square root of 153. Which is the square root of 3 times 17. is 3 times 3. Very old-fashioned way of doing these things. That 144 is the 12 times 12 or 3 times 4 times 3 times 4. So we can write that as 9 times parentheses. So those are 3, 3, 3, and 3. So we have 1 left plus 16. three times the square root of 17. So that's the, the norm. So as unit vector, u is said to be v divided by the norm of, of v. So here the vector uh, v is 3 comma 12 all over 3 times the square root of 17. So this is 1 over the square root of 17 comma 4 over the square root of 17 and if you need to rationalize that doesn't matter and you know their notation they they use the wrong stuff they use that just write it one time but this is the square root of 17 over 17 comma 4 times the square root of 17 all over 17 yeah, okay. I prefer the parentheses. Um, I think that's it for now. Okay, so we'll talk about some more later.